This is the worst I ever did trying to zero gun. It is an absolute nightmare and I'm done. I'm just frustrated with that ammo. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be talking about zero theory. And basically that's gonna boil down to zeroing the optic on your firearm. Whether it be a rifle, an other, or whatever it is, a red dot or an OPVO, Heck, even iron sights, they all work pretty much the same way. And I got a lot of comments about people asking to go over how to zero. It's a good idea. I'm not, I'm not gonna knock it. So let's do a video on zeroing. First and foremost, you have to understand, you need to figure out where you want that zero. All right, for me, I have it at 50 yards. All right, and the range that we're on here is max 50 yards. Up at our rifle range, you have 50 yards, 50 meters, or 100 yards. If you want a 100 yard zero, I suggest you start at 50 yards, get it dialed in so you're good, move your target out to 100 yards, and then readjust as you need, whether it's elevation or windage. For me, 50 yards is more than enough because this is set up, not for distance shooting because it has a red dot, it is set up specifically for close quarters, mainly inside uh, my house. So I was the, contemplating whether I should bring this one or other one that has an LPVO. And I figured I might as well just shoot mine. Um, it's easier to uh, to use uh, just because it is mine. I know any little quirks that it has. I know the condition really well because it is mine. Um, and I figured, you know, if need be, I'll go back up and we'll talk about the LPVO because the adjustments are slightly different. And then of course we'll go into slipping the rings, which is really important. And that's why it's called a zero because you're, after it's all said and done and everything is zeroed, you unscrew your little knobs that you were twisting, you pull them off, rotate them until they're at zero, plug them back on, screw them back on. Now, you know for whatever distance it's set for, whether it's 50 yards, 100 yards, whatever, that it is set at zero and then depending on how many clicks you do for elevation or windage will move your reticle up down left or right depending on what you're trying to accomplish all right so finding the zero right obviously you're going to be doing it uh there's a lot of things you can do to get it right off the bat uh, or, or relatively close so it's you're technically on paper so when you shoot at the target you're you're not like a million miles off all right to get the zero you need to be extremely stable up at our regular rifle range uh, we have bench shooting where you're sitting and you're able to prop up whatever gun you're using up onto a stand or if you're using a bipod and you're able to get it really stable really under control to get your zero which is good i've always done it prone that's why we came down here i brought a mat and we are going to do zeroing prone all right, for, for the new shooters that don't know, what we're talking about when we talk about zero is we're talking specifically about point of aim, point of impact. So the optics, whether they're, they're iron sights or a red dot or LPVO or regular rifle scope, whatever, whatever you're running, you have to understand your eye and the sights go down. Always go down. Your barrel, whether you realize it or not, points up, right? Not very much, not like this. It's very subtle and you're looking for the convergence of where the bullet comes out, because remember, the bullet goes in an arc. So it comes out, goes up, apex, and then comes back down. Your sights, however, it's line of sight, so it's down to infinity, as far as you can see. So what you're looking for is point of aim, which is down, and point of impact, where the bullet comes up and meets and crosses over. That's what we're setting. You're setting your first point of aim, point of impact. And then, after that, knowing this, we'll use 50 yards. All right, so I set it for 50 yards. I know point of aim, point of impact is here, 50 yards. Now, at 100 yards, the bullet now has traveled up higher. It's not completely at apex, but it is above my aiming. Hence, I would do a six o'clock hold. And then if I push the target all the way out to 200 yards, the bullet would come down and then again meet at point of aim, point of impact. So it's at 50 and 200-ish. It could be closer or further away by a couple of yards. If you want a true 200 yard zero, you're gonna have to put the target at 200 yards and zero it for 200 yards. Mine is set for 50, so I know it's gonna be 50 and pretty close to 200 around there maybe a little less maybe a little more with that being said having this as a known point of reference at 50 yards as my target moves closer 25 yards 10 yards 5 yards they start to separate 
I'm now aiming high to hit low because there's an offset. It's height of whatever it is over bore. And it's pretty simple. Where this red dot versus where the bullet comes out. Same with this. And you can see here the difference how high the front side is compared to where it's the bullet out. So this is the amount of distance you have to contend with. We'll call it a couple of inches. All right. It's a it's a little guesstimate. It's not exact, but you know, based on where your target is, where you're going to have to aim. Based on the offset or height over bore, that if I want to boop a nose, I'm aiming up here at the hairline, all right? Which means if I want you dead square in the chest here, I'm probably putting my red dot somewhere up in the throat area. So we're going to walk down. I'm going to show you the exact target that I'm using, and then we're going to come back down here, and I'm going to show you how I initially get on paper without a laser or anything like that, and then we'll go into shooting, all right? All right, so I've walked all the way down here. Now here's the target that I'm using. It has a grid. Each square is one inch by one inch, all right? So based on whatever the optic is, whether it's a quarter MOA or a half MOA, and that means minute of angle, easy way to describe it is a half MOA at 100 yards equals about half an inch, all right? So based on whether your optic is quarter MOA, half MOA, one MOA, two MOA, each click will move it that far at 100 yards, all right? You want to convert it for 50 yards? Just do the math, but I'll give you a little secret. You always seem to have to go further than you think, all right? So we're going to aim for here, and depending on where we hit, I'm going to shoot three rounds, and then I triangulate based on the center of those three rounds, how many over and how many down or how many up we have to go. All right, based on that. Now I like to start for anyone that comes here and you're like, well, I need to zero my gun. That's fine. I'll hunt you down a brand new piece of cardboard for your target because we want just the target and clean cardboard. This way, if you hit way out here for some reason, you're gonna see it versus you take a, a backing that's full of holes from another shooter. You're gonna have no idea if you're not on target, if you're not actually hitting paper where you hit. So at least I know if I hit in the cardboard, it's way off and I have to make a lot of adjustments and then try and get it on paper and then go from there. All right, I hope that makes sense for everyone. All right, you need a specific target, gridded. You just put a regular bullseye up here with no grid, you could do it, but it's a lot of trial and error. You may move it too much, you're not may, you may not move it enough. Now, as I said, you're always gonna have to move it more. I would, if I hit up here somewhere, I would rather shoot past here and hit down here and have to walk it back then to go here, to here, to here, to here. I'd rather just shoot past and come back. All right, but that's me. All right, so let's go back down there. Let's get set up. I'm gonna send three rounds down here and we'll see where we hit. All right, so there's gonna be a few things you need. With your optic, you should have gotten a tool to adjust it. It is just a little Allen wrench inside this little holder, along with a few other tools. But I also have my Leatherman, which is specifically designed for the AR platform. I don't have one, I have an other. Luckily, they're pretty similar in form and function, but thank goodness it is nowhere near. Y'all know what I'm saying. All right, so I've got my mag, so I'm gonna load that up, but I wanted to add that you need a stable platform, okay? So I'm doing it prone. If you don't have that option and you don't have a bench, you said, say you got to stand at 50 yards. Fine, you can do that. Standing there trying to hold it, however, you're going to be all over the map. It's, it's a nightmare. So what you need to get is something like this. All right. This is just a standard guard force bipod that you might use for hunting or shooting or your spotting scope or whatever. All right. It's small. It's compact. It packs up and you can keep it on this side of your backpack. So if I had no other option, I would stand, have this because the feet are a little rubber, but they have little spikes for outside. But if you were inside for some reason, an indoor range, you could spool these down and cover up those spikes. I, however, am outside. So of course I always have it spun down and they have little adapters that could hook into your, to your firearm, but I don't have the little adapter. All right. So what you do is you just put it up there just like that. So I am not all over the map like this. Now, it doesn't look like you're doing that, but at distance, when you're looking through that red dot, you're all over the place. So we'll do three shots, and uh, we'll walk down there, and we'll take a look. We get going. I just want to take a look. I just want to take a look and see. Yep, perfect. Now, everybody is really tempted to dial their, say you're using a red dot. Everybody wants to dial that red dot up nice and bright. I get it, all right? Problem is, if it's too bright, it actually obscures your target. 
I like to dim mine down to where I could barely see it and then I shoot at it. Plus, the dimmer it is, the longer your batteries will last. So I like to keep mine nice and dim so I can see straight through the little pip that's inside and actually see the target because that's what I'm paying attention to. I'm not concentrating on the dot. It's different than iron sights. With iron sights, right, you concentrate on that front sight. That is your world, your universe. When it comes to using a red dot, you look through the red dot, concentrate on the target, superimposing your little reticle on there. Let's get that going. All right. Now, all right. So I got the magazine. We're gonna send three rounds downrange into the target, and then we'll go down there and take a look at where I hit. Right. Here we go. Oh, I don't wanna grab that. All right, on the side note, now you can see that because the front end is supported, whether it be bipod or a block or a bag, whether it be backpack or, or whatever you have, you don't have to hold the front, it's already supported. All you have to do now is hold back here, hold it tight into your shoulder and take a shot. All right, three shots. All right, that last one I think I pulled a little bit, but let's grab a Sharpie, walk down there, and take a look at it. So I just made it down here, and ooh. My zero is off. Now I know I was here in the center of the black and I hit down here. So we'll call right about here center. All right, oh, you guys couldn't see, I'm sorry. We'll call right here about center. So all we have to do now is measure over. So that's one, two, three, blocks up, one, two blocks up. All right, so I'm gonna go make adjustments. All right, so I need to come left and go up. All right, so I know the optic is quarter MOA, all right? So at 100 yards, I would be doing four, eight, 12, 12 clicks to the left, and four, eight, 12 clicks up, because it's three and three. So one click, if it's a quarter inch, uh, is gonna be a lot more closer, right? So I'm gonna go eight clicks left, eight clicks up, and we'll do it again. All right. So we're all set up now. I got my handy dandy tool. So I know I have to go up. So on the optic, there, there are little spots for your tool and it will say either up or down, left or right. And then you just turn it accordingly. Except some optics, whether it's called the left hand or right hand rule, sometimes up really means down. I know this one up is actually up. I'm moving the optic up. So I said eight. So, okay, I went eight up. And then I had to go left. All right, so there's eight and eight, and then we go right back into shooting. All right, make it safe. Let's head back down and see what we did. Now, normally you wouldn't be like me running back and forth, especially here if you're up there, because we only do a ceasefire every half hour. That's why we always tell people, make sure you have a spotting scope or a pair of binoculars. And if you don't have a spotting scope, you can rent a spotting scope from us. All right, so to the target, let's see what we did. All right, so as you can see, now oh, it's way up here. It's absolutely atrocious, all right? So I was here and now I'm up here. So that's double what I need. So I'm gonna rock it back now, all right? So I'm gonna mark this and come back. That should be three and three, all right? I am taking back half of what I did. Let's hear in that double click. It went click, click, and I had to think, was it one or two? Pretty sure it was one, but we'll find out. Next three rounds. All right, get it supported. And there you go. Show clear. All right, back down there. I'm definitely getting my steps in today. All right, so here, here, and here. Yeah, I know my grouping sucks. All right, so here to here to here, which means the center is right there. So, hey, I'm happy with side to side, the windage. Now elevation. So I'm going to move it up another click or so. All right. All right. For the record, when you're twisting it, don't sneeze. I did. I think I clicked it more than I should have. But... 
I'll find out. I'm gonna th shoot three, and uh, I'll just run down and take a quick look. I'll bring the camera if it's worthwhile. I'll let you guys see. I have one shot here, one shot there, and one shot up here. So I need to come over to the right, and another click or so. We'll do it again. Let's see what happens. Another thing I'm sure would help, I probably, if I brought my glasses. But I'm wearing sunglasses, so it is what it is. All right, I did one click to the right. So let's see how that goes. Well, let's see what happened. All right, I'm gonna be honest. It is now 4.30. I started doing this at three o'clock in the afternoon. I was having, you saw the beginning, right? We moved it and just, I could not get it zeroed in. I was like, oh, basically I had to undo everything that I had did because it's, it's not just your optic and the firearm. It, you have to take into account your ammo. This is a bag of mystery ammo that we got from uh, an estate. We're not gonna sell it to customers because we were unsure of it. We inspected all the ammo that we had. This looked fine. Looks like factory. So couldn't get it to go anywhere. Long story short, I switched over to my known ammo. Known factory, 855, green tip, right? So this is federal. It's what most of my personal ammo is. I undid everything I did. I've, I've got it where I wanted it. Plus I stopped going prone and <clears throat> so I was just, I was getting aggravated. Uh, I was losing my cool. So I broke this out, put it on the ground. All I was doing, I was sitting here, kicking one foot out, putting this bad boy up on the bipod, getting in and just going to town. When I was shooting the factory ammo, the reason I was like, whoa, that's not cool is I really wish I caught it on camera. I'll show you guys. There's a pile of brass because I just kept going and going and going. So normally when you shoot, your brass gets kicked out. It looks like this. Straightforward, pretty normal, all the way around. This one, and I really wish I was recording it. I pulled the trigger and it was like a boom, boom. It felt like two rounds went off, right? It felt like, like it kicked in the full auto, which it can't do. It's only a semi-automatic. And it took me kind of by surprise. Now, I know for a fact I had four rounds loaded. So when it went boom, boom, first thing I did, safe the gun, popped the mag out, cleared it. Two rounds in the mag, one in the chamber, one that went boom, boom, down range, which is weird because I didn't have any squibs and haven't had any misfires or hang fires or, or any malfunctions. But as I was walking around, going back, one piece of brass on the ground kind of stuck out from the rest. So I picked it up and started looking at it. The reason it stuck out like a sore thumb is you can see how it's all dirty at the bottom, right? As opposed to this one, which is all clean, this one is absolutely atrocious. So it looks like it had ruptured, all right? And I, I can't show you, this is what I saw. So I took a known good piece of brass. There's nothing in it, it's been struck. I held it up toward the sun, closed one eye and put it up against my eye. And what do I see inside? Nothing, because this one is normal. This one, however, looks like it blew out. When I put it up and I look through, what do I see? Daylight. Which means the case itself must have ruptured. So loaded up a, a mag of known good ammo straight out of the factory box, all right? Now, this is how it is. Factory box, this holds 20. Here's the the mag I loaded, all right? This one's empty. This one still has 10 rounds in it. You can count on the back, all right? I shot, took me three tries to get it zeroed to where I was satisfied for 50 yards. Remember, I'm using this for close quarters. 50 yards is just my starting point, so I know where to come back to, all right? So let's walk down there and I'll show you what I finally was able to triangulate on the last one. I drew big arrows. Save you guys a trip for me walking back and forth, back and forth. And in fact, because I was getting tired of walking back and forth, this is a side note, a little sidebar for us. I was like, well, I'll dig through my bag and I'll find my binoculars or my monocular. Nope, all that's in there is the rangefinder. No binoculars. So I had no choice but to walk. Okay, so when all was said and done, using 855, like we started off here, which wasn't that bad. And we drifted up to here and I was just all over the map. All right, ammo has a lot to do with it. All right. Ammo does have a lot to do with it. So buy good ammo. Don't buy cheap crap ammo. That's what we were uh, using. Unknown cheap ammo, I would take it. So using known good ammo, I was able to undo whatever it was that ammo happened to be doing. So I got here. There's an arrow there. An arrow here. And I hate to say it, but I pulled one way up here. All right. But here, here, and here. So I know I pulled that one high. So if I didn't pull it, it would probably be down here somewhere. So it is in the red, it is good. I'm happy with it. 
I'm happy with it. It's good. Again, I am not shooting at 50 yards all the time. It's designed to be close quarters. All right, so now that we have known 855, known good, I am going to show you what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna make a black dot over here, right here. I'm gonna come up to the 25 yard line, all right? And I'll do it in the kneeling position. I'm gonna take three shots aiming at that black dot, all right? So you guys know that I do it. All right, slightly lower than the bullseye. I'm gonna aim at that and you're gonna see where exactly the rounds hit, all right? So you see I'm here. I know I'm at the 25 yard line because it is measured off. All right, so kneeling. I already put the mag in, chambered it. Now I'm gonna aim directly at that black dot. All right, so I know I have a good zero. I aimed here, hit here, here, and here. Okay, there you go. I hit lower than here. That's the offset, all right? So I'd have to aim this much higher, so up here somewhere, to hit there, all right? So take this, on uh, here, uh, Right around here. I'll aim here, see if we hit there. 25 yards. All right, back at the 25 yard line. I will move you guys back. All right, we're gonna aim at that plus sign I made and see if we hit close to that black dot. That's the dot, there's the three right there close enough all right so we know that's that's a 25 yard all right again i'm gonna aim i'm gonna come up a little closer about 10 yards or so and uh aim here and see where it hits there all right let's try that 10 yards aimed here one two three one two three the first ones one two three and then one two three four good enough now you understand ballistics all right the zero is set for 50 yards anything closer i have to aim high the target gets further away than 50 yards I have to aim low to hit high. Hope that makes sense. All right. This is the worst I ever did trying to zero gun. It is an absolute nightmare and I'm done. I'm just frustrated with that ammo. Remember, I forgot to show you guys how I personally initially set up getting on paper. So if I take a brand new optic, mount it up, how do I even get remotely close to paper? So there's two ways of doing it. One is we have, and I've used them in the past, is there's a laser, looks like a, a regular round. We have multiple calibers. You drop it down inside the star chamber, down into the chamber itself. And if it's in there, you don't want to just slam the bolt carrier group into it, all right? Drop it down gently. Pressure from the bolt carrier group going forward will fire the laser right out the muzzle. And I start at 50 feet in our indoor range, and I just dial this in until it hits the laser. There you go. Now, if you don't have the the ability to get one of those, or if you don't have one, there's another option uh, that I like to use, and I've used it in the past, and I've had a lot of luck with it. Uh, not as good as some other people with it, like Dennis is a master at it. And uh, just grab a pen to pop it open. What we do here is you're sitting at the bench, your target's out there, you're gonna support the front end, and you're gonna crack it open. And then, all right, you're gonna take, this is nasty. You're gonna take the BCG out. All right, I'm gonna put mine over here. It's slightly dirty. All right, and all I do is with the front end rusting, the optic is on, whether it's the red dot or if it's the LPVO or anything. And all I do is I look down the barrel from the back end, so through the chamber, down the length, out the muzzle. I'm like, okay, kind of move it around, line it up. Like, all right, I know that it's right where I wanna hit, and then I just look up and see where the optic is. If the optic is off, I look, barrel, okay, bullseye. Oh, I'll adjust this till it roughly matches when I look down the barrel. I see the bullseye, I look into the optic, I see the bullseye, the pips on the bullseye. Go back and forth a couple times. If it's there, it's good. It's not an exact science, okay? It's just getting you close. It's just getting you close. I said, just on paper, nothing spectacular. All right, and then you shoot and you start that zeroing process. All right, now, I just wanted to say, in my defense, I am generally not that bad. I have never had such problems getting a zero on a firearm of any caliber, of any style, anything. It strictly came down to it was the ammo. 
they were mystery ammo. I don't know if they were factory or reloads or what, but they were not functioning like they were supposed to. Hence, I switched over to known good factory ammo, my personal ammo, and I was able to get that zero, no problem. Within six rounds that I shot, not a problem. And to show you what I'm talking about, out of the same group of mystery ammo, which is not for sale, right? You find rounds like this, it's normal, good. I'd shoot it, not bad. And then you find rounds, same caliber, that look like this. Now, if you can't tell, that's loaded upside down. See the difference? No, it's not a snub nose. It is literally loaded upside down. So, when you're zeroing, make sure you use the good ammo. Don't try and use the uh, the cheap stuff, especially if you're making a YouTube video and you're like, I use the cheap stuff. Nope, ended up using all the, the good stuff I had with me. But it was worth it. Confirmed my zero and uh, move on.